Just a couple of things here before we move on to another section, but some important stuff here, including the answer to a question I'm asked all the time, and that's really why I'm putting it here in the course. Uh, why did the switch interfaces have names like Fast Ethernet 0 slash 1, 0 slash 2, etc. Why aren't they just numbered, you know, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, you know, like normal people count? Because when we're counting on our fingers or anything else, we don't say, well, this is 0 slash 1, 0 slash 2, etc. Well, here's where that comes from. It, these names follow a naming convention, slot number followed by port number. And most of the switches we're working with here have only fixed ports, and certainly nothing wrong with that. But when you're working on a device that has only fixed ports, those ports are on slot zero. So that's where that slot's coming from. And you might think, well, what other slots are there? Well, when you have a modular switch or a modular router, which is a device that allows you to add ports via expansion slots, they have their fixed ports on slot zero as well. Now, when you add a module to a modular device, the actual slot number you end up with depends first off on the specific device and the physical slot to which you add the module. Because you might have a modular router that has you know, three expansion slots on it, or two or four, and maybe it doesn't matter which one of those you're putting a particular module into. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. But once you put it in, that's where the slot number is going to come from. It depends on which slot you put that module in. Woo. So, modular devices and the slot numbers, that's not the kind of thing that's going to be on your exam, but I wanted you to know that because it's real world. You see many more modular switches and routers today than you used to. And also, I just flat out wanted you to know where we're getting those names. We're not making them up just to make things difficult. It just seems that way. Now, about this console port, we saw this picture when we were going over the console port passwords, and we're not going to do that again. But I did want you to know, first off, that this is not the only kind of connector you may see with a console port. And also, when you do see this one, you may need a little extra equipment to make that connection. And what you're going to need if you're connecting, say, your laptop directly to a console port, in this case, with that RJ45 connector there, you're going to need this. You're going to need a rollover cable. And we call it that because every wire in the cable rolls over. And I'll show you the numbers here in just a moment. But it's usually a distinctive blue cable. It's a good one to keep around. It's a great one to have in your bag. And especially if you're a traveling admin. And you might want to keep two because every once in a while they have a habit of disappearing, if you know what I mean. Now, again, they're called rollover because every wire in the cable rolls over to another pin, 182736 and so forth as you see here on the board. If you want to memorize those, great. I don't think that part's going to come up, but it's a good idea to know what a rollover cable is used for. Now, if we're looking at that rollover cable, you might look at that and say, okay, on the right side, I see what we call an RJ45 connector, and we see exactly where that would go in, and you put it in, and hopefully you hear a little snap when that top tab goes all the way in, and everything's fine. However, Rare is the laptop that has a DB9 connector on it. And what happens is, especially first time you're using it, you, know, you plug it in the console port and then you get that into the laptop and you say to yourself, how in the world am I going to connect this? Well, what you're going to need there is an adapter. And there, you can find them online all over the place, uh, eBay, any cable dealer, that kind of thing. But you would need some kind of adapter for that because your laptop is not going to have a DB9 port but of course you'll have some USB ports and you can just get a DB9 to USB adapter and you're ready to go. Now you're probably thinking, boy, that sounds like a pain in the butt. <laughs> you know, for something that we may do pretty darn often, it's like I got to have the special cable and I got to have this. Why don't they just make USB ports? Well, as you can see here, some switch models do have that. Now, they're almost, I haven't seen one yet that didn't have the classic, what I call classic, because you don't like to say old, the classic RJ45 connector. And what you also see here, though, is a USB port. And you can see those on the back of the switch right next to the console port. And other times you're going to see the USB port on the front of the switch and the classic RJ45 on the back. But I did want to let you know that not every Cisco switch you walk up to is going to look like this uh, with just the RJ45 connector. Some are going to have this. 
Newer models will have both that you could use, a USB and an RJ45. And I believe I've heard of ones that only have USB ports, but I have not seen one yet. So that's more real world information than anything else. Just wanted you to know that. When we come back, we're going to take a quick look at the description command, interface range, and then we will march on.